hey y'all welcome back to my channel if you're new here thanks for stopping by today i'm going to do a part two to the notion setup so previously i showed you how i simply set my notion up i'm making these videos for anyone who is struggling with notion like me i'm in the struggle with you and we're gonna figure this out together today i'm going to show you how i updated my notion templates for 2024 and i'm also going to show you a few tips and tricks i've learned so let's get into it Okay, so this is the Notion template that we created a few months ago when I showed you how I used the free templates to create my Notion. I'm going to update this Notion. If you're new to Notion and you don't have any of the templates set up, I'm going to link the video here. And this is just a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I use free templates from YouTube to create this template. So if you want to go back and watch that video first and then come back to this video. In this video, we'll just be updating this template. This is going to be our learning template together. So this template mirrors what my personal Notion looks like. It's easier for me to figure things out on my personal Notion and come back to this template and show you how I did what I did. For me in 2024, I want everything to be as simple as possible. While I love the way that this Notion is set up, I've simplified a lot of what's on here. So I'm going to show you how I did that real quick. So the first thing I did was change the cover out and I went on Canva and created a new cover with my word for the year. My word for 2024 is refresh. So this is my refresh year. I'm refreshing my outlook on a lot of things. So my Notion template is going to reflect that. For this top portion, I deleted off a few of the pictures and some of the quotes and I just made this a simple little layout. So I'm going to show you how I did that real quick. My next section, I kept this task board, but mine doesn't say this week's task. It just says task. I'm going to show you how I created a title for my task dashboard. So this is not how mine looks. I'm going to come here in this empty space and I'm going to add a row and write task. And then I'm going to change this. I'm going to turn it into a heading three because I like the size of those. And I'm going to bring it below the divider and add it in right above the task board. So now that has my task title on there. There are two ways. This is one of the things I wanted to show you how to remove the label for your board. So instead of having to say task task, I want to hide the database title. So you can do that two ways. You can come to these three dots and you can hide the database title or you can use the three dots over to the right and it go to layout and then it gives you the option down here to show the database title or you can hide it. You can toggle it off there. Either way, it does the same thing and you can get rid of the, the double title. This is what my task board looks like. And then down here, all I did was resize the pictures. I just made them a little smaller so it didn't take up as much space. I did remove this playlist off of my homepage because I didn't use it like I thought I would. So I got rid of that. And for my monthly overview, I've linked this to my Google Calendar. And what I did, I used Notion Automations to link this and it just walks you step by step through it. Now, I think it's $7 a month for that. And what I like about this is whatever I update in my Notion calendar, it shows up in my Google calendar and vice versa. So if I put something on my Google my Google calendar, it comes into Notion and I have everything in one place. So that's all I did to update my homepage. And as far as some of the other templates, like my yearly goal, when we set the yearly goal template up, we added this yearly goals archive on here. So if you've used this, I didn't use it for 2023 because I started late using Notion in 2023. So my template was blank. All I did was go in and update the year on mine. If you put in goals for 2023 and you want to update it to 2024, all you have to do is go to the little box. I don't know what that gray box is called, but the little gray box to the side and you're going to duplicate it. You're going to change the 2023 to 24. Just drag your 2023 goals down to your yearly goals archive. That way you'll still have the goals that you set for last year, but it won't be on your template. It'll be like in your in your save file in Notion. So you will always have it to go back and reflect on, but it won't be visible on your page. And that's basically how you'll update all your templates. Like for the budget template, I just went to the three dots on the side of it and I duplicated the whole template. And once I duplicated the template, the one that I used for 2023, I went in and added 2023 
budget template on there. And then I came down and I added a page. So this page is gonna be like my master file um, archive. So I'm gonna put a trash can icon on this. And now that I have this archive page over here on the side, for the 2023 budget, all I have to do is drag it and drop it into my archive. So I still have my 2023 budget that I can go back and look at. It's not active in my Notion dashboard. Now I have the one for 2024. And you can add 2024 to your title. And that way you can keep up with the years as you recreate the templates now the only thing about this is you're going to have to go in and delete any of the financial information like if your information has changed you're going to have to go in there and change that on your template and you're also going to have to update your years on your template so for instance on my 2024 budget template i want my annual overview to reflect 2024 instead of 23. this view gives you your quarter views but at the end you can select all months when you select all months you can just come and click on the title and you can change each one of these to 24. and that way as you put in your monthly information You've changed the year so the months stay the same for the years. All that information is going to cross over to 2024 instead of 2023. So you don't have to update each one of the, the databases because those are monthly. You just have to update anywhere that you see the year. The only thing about updating your budget templates is going to be a little time consuming. You're going to have to go in and delete all your financial information that you put in for 2023 out. The most changes would have to be made to the income and expenses templates. So if you go to those templates for my expenses, if you wanted to go in and you want to delete all the rows out, I figured out how to delete all the rows at one time, y'all. So if you go over here and you highlight all of the rows, and you right click in the area it gives you the option to delete everything now i didn't do this on my template because i use most of this stuff and if it's already there then that's double work trying to put it back in there but what you can do is go in line by line and take out what you don't need and add in what you do now i want to show you if you add in something let's say for january i wanted to add in a rental fee that i have It's a recurring expense and five dollars a month when you add something to this expense template you want to come back to the main page of the budgeting template and when you get here you want to go to your annual overview and select and open the month that you added the item into for your expenses you want to make sure that expense is listed when you come down to the expense section if you select one of the categories that are in expense and use the plus sign at the very end it'll give you the option to add in you can search for it by name using this top line or you can scroll through and find it. That's going to take a little time because it's going to show you all your expenses for every month. Every expense that you have on your expense, um, your expense tracker is going to come up in this area. So the easiest way to do it is to search by the name. So once you put the name in, rental fee, I'm just going to use the plus sign to add it in. And now that's included in your expenses for the month. So that's how you update that page. If you have all your expenses listed from 2023 and not much has changed and you just want to delete the amount out, if you select everything in the row. Once I select the top row, just hold down your mouse and drag it till you get to the bottom. And then I just use my backspace on the keyboard and delete everything out. The yearly goals and the budget template were the only ones I really had to go in and update for the year. The rest of the templates, like your monthly goals, they're set up to update each month. So you can just go in and click and add in a new month, drag the old month down to your monthly archives, and you're ready to go for that type of template. So now I'm gonna show you a few tips that I've learned. We're gonna go back to the home screen. Hopefully these tips will help you further customize your Notion template to be what you need it to be. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to add multiple database views to one area. If we scroll down to where the calendar view is, let's say I wanted to add in the view from the books that I've read. So to add in a view, you just wanna to come to the top line and use the plus symbol. When you select that, it's gonna tell you basically there's no data source. You need to pick what source that you want to bring into this view. So I'm gonna select my bookshelf and bring that in. And now I have a quick view of what I've read I want to update my books I can just come down here to the calendar and go over to tables and that's my bookshelf and you can actually rename this and put it as bookshelf so 
So now you have each view label. The next thing I'm going to show you is how you can change the view when you open something up in Notion. So coming to my 2024 planners, when I select edit, it automatically opens in the side peak. That's the way it's set. If you want to change that, you can use this icon at the top and you can change the view. So you have the option to do a center peak, which it pops up a box in the middle of the page. You can also change the view to full page. So it opens up automatically. Now going back to my home page for my tab, if I wanted to change the default view for the whole task board, if you come to the three dots and you go down to your layout, scroll down and then you have the option down here, open pages in, and you can select however you want the pages to open for each database. Another thing I figured out is how to add columns in. When we first set this template up, we created columns by dragging to the side of one that was already there and waiting for the line to pop up. Now you can set your lines up by going to an empty space on here. So you're gonna type in backslash and then column. And it's gonna give you the option to select how many columns you wanna add. So you can do two, three, four, or five. I'm gonna select three. And once you have your columns there, so I'm gonna use this test to show you where the columns are. So when I drag it up, you can see there's the first column, middle, and then the last one. The next thing I wanna show you is how to clean up the titles for your database. So coming down here, we added in the bookshelf. If I didn't wanna have this say bookshelf here and bookshelf down here at the bottom, all you have to do is select these three dots and hide the database title. The next thing I wanna show you is how to add in your own widgets to your template. So one of the websites that I use for widgets is Widgetbox. When you get to the website, you're gonna to have to create an account with them, but once you create your account, they give you access to free widgets to use in Notion. So on my page, you can see that I have a couple of widgets already built, but if you wanted to create one, you can go into your clocks and it gives you widgets that you can use for that. It gives you the weather. So let's, let's create the weather for mine. I don't have the weather on mine. So here you would put in your location. You can customize the background color to make it match your template. And you can change the color of the icons and the text too. Once you have your widget customized the way you want, you just come down here and copy the link to the widget. Go back to your notion and then wherever you want the widget to be, I'm gonna put mine here. Now in this space I created, I'm gonna right click and paste. And it's gonna ask me, do I want to, it's basically asking, what do you wanna do with this link? You wanna create an embed here so your widget actually shows up. That's all you have to do to add widgets to your template. I have one more tip that I wanna show you. I'm gonna to go to my content planner. Here under brain dump where it has the bullet list, you can change the icon for your bullets. If you select that gray box and you go to list format, you can create a circle and you can also use a square there. I actually thought of one more thing I wanted to show y'all. Let's go to the books and audible log. The columns for my currently reading section are pretty lengthy. If you use Excel, you know that you can freeze one of the rows and you can have your data move around that one row. It just stays solid. You can do that in Notion too. If you select the name of the column, I can freeze this column and then when I get ready to update my books, I can do the author name, the rating, and then if I wanna slide it over, URL. And if you wanted to add anything else to this column, you can just keep rotating it over and you would still have your book name there so you can see it. All right, y'all, that's all I have for you today. I definitely will be using Notion more this year than I did last year. The more I learn about it, the more that I wanna use it. And when I learn new stuff, I'll definitely hop back on and teach y'all what I've learned. Like I said earlier, we in this thing together. All right, y'all, till next time.